Another way we can resist shear in reinforced concrete structures is using shear reinforcement. When shear reinforcement crosses a crack, in, as shown in the top section, it will resist shear uh, directly. So in this case, we have three bars crossing our crack. So these three bars will contribute to our VS component. Our VS component will be made up of the area of our shear reinforcement, AV, times the stress in our shear reinforcement, F sub R, times the number of bars that are crossing um, our shear crack. So we know that our number of bars is equal to uh, this X or uh, D distance, so the, the horizontal distance of our crack. So I'm going to say D divided by the spacing of our shear reinforcement, S. We'll also assume that our stress in our shear reinforcement um, at ultimate is just going to be Fy. And then putting all these values together will give us our Vs is equal to Av times Fy times D divided by S. And this is the expression that we use to find the um, shear strength provided from our steel rebar. In rectangular beams, we primarily have two types of uh, shear reinforcement. We have ties, uh, which encompass the entire rectangular section. And then we have stirrups, uh, which are two legs and normally continued uh, through the bottom uh, of the section, but aren't continuous through the top of the section. I next want to talk about other ways that the transverse reinforcement helps our reinforced concrete beam behavior. Uh, first, it will carry a portion of the, sh of the shear strength, which we saw on uh, in the previous slide. Um, next, it, it will resist the propagation of diagonal cracks. So as our crack in our section um, occurs and starts to develop, our shear reinforcement is going to hold that crack together. So it's going to minimize the, the crack width. And minimizing the crack width means that we'll be able to count on our aggregate interlock component of our uh, concrete contribution to shear. We also have uh, that our transverse reinforcement is going to restrain our longitudinal steel. Uh, it'll do this in two ways. For our compression steel, it's going to prevent buckling. So where when we have a, our bar and we place compression on it, that bar is going to want to buckle. When we put a transverse reinforcement uh, in the section, it's going to restrain this buckling. So then we'll have um, concrete resisting buckling on the bottom side, and we'll have our uh, transverse reinforcement re uh, restraining buckling on the top side. Um, so it'll also uh, restrain splitting of the concrete due to dowel action. Uh, so as I said, uh, when talking about the concrete contributions to, to shear, um, we had this dowel action. So, um, so our shear due to dowel action is going to be resisted by our longitudinal steel and the concrete immediately under that longitudinal steel. Um, so if we have a stirrup right next to uh, where, our, or where we're counting on dowel action, that stirrup's going to actually uh, pull up on, on, the, uh, on the longitudinal steel. Um, so here in our cross section, uh, you know, our, our splitting plane or our dowel uh, action is going to want to cause this bottom concrete to split, and our steel is going to restrain uh, that concrete and restrain those bars from, uh, uh, from moving down in the section. Finally, uh, our transverse reinforcement is going to um, confine our concrete that's in compression, which is going to increase our capacity a little bit and also increase our ductility. Um, so in our, our cross section, our top part of the beam, which I'm uh, circling in 
uh, red here is going to be in compression. So this transverse reinforcement is going to provide confinement um, to this compressive section, uh, which will increase our, our capacity and, and ductility a little bit. So these are the ways uh, that our transverse reinforcement are going to uh, help behavior.